Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Jelly Killer, the adventures of a young bioweapon from Immortal Game Studio. Jelly Killer is coming out on Steam on March 24th, actually should be out by the time you're watching this, and it will retail for... I don't know what. Uh, for some reason, the price wasn't included in the press materials, uh, but as I said, this game is out on Steam now. Check the description below for a link to the Steam page, and if by the end of this video you've liked what you've seen, go over there and see exactly how much money you need to trade in order to own this game. Now, as I said, we were missing the price. That could be in part due to the fact that uh, Immortal Game Studio is in fact just a one-man studio, one Russian gentleman who runs this studio all by his lonesome and uh, really is doing a lot of heavy lifting from the looks of things here. Immortal Game Studio does have a couple of uh, mobile games out on, at least on Android. I found them on the, the, uh, the Google Play. Uh, but other than that, I think this might be their first PC game. Uh, originally Russian, so uh, you, you do have the Russian language here. Now, of course, we're going to play in English. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I love this. I love seeing developers from all over the world. I love the idea that this this game thing that we do is it's a universal language and that we are, we're part of this global community. And that, that th things like this, the retro 2D platformer is just an understood universal language of what it means to be a gamer, whether you live and were raised in Russia or Cuba, well, maybe not Cuba, or uh, here in America. It's, uh, it's, here it is. It is a retro 2D platformer, and, and that indeed is what Je Jelly Killer is. It's a simple platformer with a single basic mechanic that they use to great, uh, great effect. I've really enjoyed my time with this game. I would say it, it's charmed me, if I had to use a, a phrase that I believe I do occasionally use in these videos. Uh, Jelly Killer has indeed charmed me. I've, I've really liked it. Played about 45 minutes of it, and uh, that has gotten me through... Uh, 15 of the over 50 levels, I think it's 54, 56, something like that, uh, total levels. But uh, yeah, here you go. I mean, it's 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 a beautiful looking game. Even just the screen right here, just just looking great. It, they're they're hitting the aesthetic that they he is hitting the aesthetic that he's going for perfectly. Now I'm going to start with uh, the first level because this game's got a story. Man, this game's got a story. So let's let's check in on it. Now, this is normally the part in the in a video where I might, uh, you know, put on my fake voice actor voice and, you know, uh, in 2784, after decades of zombie invasions, the scientist finally discovered the so-called zombie. But man, that's some dense stuff here, right? So, there's a lot of story in this game, and you don't need all this story to convince me that this blob can jump, right? Like, I, I took, like, a boy and his blob at face value. Like, this kid had a blob, and I don't know how, but if you feed it jelly beans, it turns into a ladder. I don't need six paragraphs to convince me of that. Okay, so apparently zombies invaded, and scientists managed to extract the essence of what it is to be a zombie, the zombie genome, and put it into a jelly-like body, and then, of course, because this is what always happened, it escaped, and you are that jelly killer. Here we go. I appreciate that that story's there, don't get me wrong, but it's totally unnecessary, completely unnecessary. You could have started me on this screen, and I would have accepted at face value what this game has to offer. So here we go. I am using the Xbox 360 controller. All X input devices do function for this game and uh, the DualShock 4 also supported here. I, I want to send like a time capsule email back to the, uh, the, the, the big Dave of 1994 and say like, it's going to get better, man. Like eventually controllers on PC are just going to work and it's going to be great. And I love it. I love it every time I just pick up this controller and it just works. Thank you. Thank you. Indie developers, thank you. Microsoft, thank you. Everybody who, who's involved in this, thank you. So here is the mechanic. This is the single mechanic of this game that uh, everything else will hinge on. This little blob that is created from the zombie genome can take over the minds of people and turn them into zombies. And isn't this guy happy to be a zombie? He's so happy to be a zombie. So he jumps higher, because professors jump higher. 
and we need him to get through this level. Uh, so pretty much all the levels end with this little tube, which uh, extracts you out to the next area. Uh, generally, you need to leave your body in order to access this tube, but, but you can put the body in the tube and, you know, it explodes. Uh, yeah, let's face it, you know, these scientists, it's not going to go good for them. Once I've possessed them, they're going to die because if I exit their body, they explode uh, into a, a cloud of red mist. So, you know, whatever. Getting sucked into a tube and, and rended apart is about the same as me jumping out of the top of your head and exploding the rest of your body. This is my single complaint with the game. If you made a mistake, press start and restart in the menu. So if you have a tool tip to tell people that they might screw themselves in a level and that they have to uh, potentially restart a level if they screw themselves, it should just be a button. It really should just be a button. Uh, that is something, you know, so for instance, if I get this guy and I, I fall down here and he dies, I can't complete this level. I need a button. I need a button to do this. Uh, like I said, that's really my only complaint with this game. Uh, if you have mechanics in your game that you know will force players from time to time to restart, you might as well just make the button to restart a, a, a button. You, you know, not a, not a series of menus. Very, very small thing for me, but please, learn the lesson of Super Meat Boy. It feels so good to just jump right back into a level. And these levels are, are bite-sized. They're small enough. Really? Really? They're small enough that... Um, you can jump right back in and you can pick right up from where you made a mistake. Although some of the later levels do almost call out for a checkpoint. I don't know that we'll see any of that in this video. Uh, but uh, indeed, I do think there are times when this game could benefit from, from checkpoints. Even though most of the levels are just nice, small, bite-sized things. Lasers. Don't stand too close to them. Bzz. So here we go. I say here we go, but really we've seen it all. This is kind of what this game has to offer. They will give you different people to possess, which you're about to see. Uh, you will sometimes have to have, you know, creative use of your uh, host body, for instance, and this, and this is uh, not a jump I can make, but I can uh, effectively super jump by, uh, uh, by exploding out of the head of that poor man. And now we're gonna see our first uh, additional character here. And, uh, you know, the first couple of people you encounter are kind of, they've accepted their fate. They're kind of okay. Like, they see this zombie blob and they don't run. They don't try to step on it or punch it. Uh, they just accept their fate. I'm going to be possessed and then later I'm going to be, uh, you know, rended asunder by this uh, zombie jelly. But um, I'm okay with that. I can, I, can, I can make peace with that. Later on, however, you do have people who will resist you. The game definitely gets interesting as it as it moves forward. They do introduce new mechanics at a nice clip, a really nice clip. You know, I I, uh, I definitely can't complain about the pacing of the game. For me, it's been uh, it's been just about right. There have been occasions where I've thought like, okay, I get it. Uh, can we introduce something new? But for the most part, they have really, really, uh, they have really doled out the new uh, experiences at just the right level. Now, one thing that this game does do from on occasion, which I kind of have to take umbrage with on a small level, is gotchas. Uh, things that kill you that you couldn't have possibly planned for. This is one right here. Until you know that laser's there, there's no way you could avoid that laser. I'm not a huge fan of that, uh, but if this game's premise is that sometimes trial and error... I got an achievement for getting hit by the lasers! Uh, if, if part of this game's uh, premise is that sometimes you need to uh, trial and error through a level, okay, great. But if that is your premise, you know, I'm, I'm not super happy about that. <laughs> I don't mind it, uh, but it's not my favorite thing. Trial and error, not, not my favorite thing. So as a consequence, you basically have to jump up here, let that thing activate, and then... Uh, and then fall back down. Uh, so... The only other thing that I really feel compelled to talk about with this game is the art style. It looks great. I love it. It immediately evokes another artist for me, though. Uh, that would be Paul Robertson, the uh, artist uh, currently working at uh, currently working at and or with uh, Tribute Games on games like Mercenary Kings, and uh, it, it's really, really Paul Robertson. 
which I guess, you know, in and of itself is fine. Like his style is reminiscent of the Technos, you know, River City Ransom uh, styles and, and, you know, and, and Mercenary Kings specifically was in a lot of ways emulating, you know, Metal Slug, but, but it's, it's really close. And, and there is some chatter about this on, 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 on the Greenlight page. Uh, for the game, and and you know the, the the to his credit, the developer comes out and says no. You know I acknowledge the the, the similarities, but you know I idolize Paul Robertson uh, and his his uh, artistic sensibilities, and that is why this game looks like this because I chose to emulate him. It is not because uh, I have you know let's say traced over any of his work uh, in any way, um, which I'm hoping that's not the case because I like this game too much. Uh, for that to end up being the case, you know, I, I really would hate uh, if if that was what ended up happening uh, with this game. That it did come out that uh, that these assets were were traced or stolen or, or or anything like that. And that would just be a a huge bummer. Now, I will say uh, this game looks like every other game that uh, that that Immortal Game Studios has has put out. Uh, so it it does indeed uh, look like their art style. Uh, so I, I don't you know I. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I, I believe that this is original artwork uh, that they have created for this game, that he has created for this game. Uh, and, and, you know, that's kind of, I'm kind of okay with, with, with still recommending this game despite a slight uh, bit of, of, of controversy uh, when it comes to the, the art itself. You know, what more can you really do in this world? S someone says, hey, you know, this looks like you did uh, not a great thing. And you say, well, I, I didn't. You know, that's <laughs> you either choose to believe that person or or you don't. Uh, I mean, I I think the game looks uh, very much like uh, if you had told me that the Paul Robertson worked on this game, I wouldn't I, I would believe you. I would say, of course he did. Look at it. It's it's another feather in his cap. It's, it's another it's another great piece of work from him. Uh, but again, if 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 you are emulating that style, you are emulating that style, and so of course it's going to look like that. Like I said, just crossing my fingers that that is in fact what's happening, uh, that we are emulating that style and, and nothing untaught is going on. Um, really hope so. Really, really, really hope so. All right, well, this is it. This is uh, this is Jelly Killer. Uh, there really isn't a whole lot more to show you. There will be other uh, types of enemies. I, I, I will, uh, I'll pop back out here just so you can get an idea of the other enemy type that I have, uh, I have encountered and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Here is the other enemy type that I have encountered, the Shoot Man. And of course, when we possess the Shoot Man, let's try that again. When we possess the Shoot Man, we get to shoot. Of course, if he sees us, he'll shoot us. And he saw us again. Let's try that one more time. Please. There we go. It's 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 like watching a train crashing in slow motion as this video comes to a halt because I can't manage to time my jump. All right, and now we can shoot. Not only can we shoot, we can actually uh, we can twist and turn, you know, things like this. Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm you know, that's a little it's a little weird. A little herky jerky. I wish I had uh, better control. Uh, as the game crashes, as the game crashes, fatal error in action number one. Uh, oh well, oh well. Uh, you know, games crash. It happens. I've never had this game crash on me before. This is the first time, so I'm not going to condemn it for that. Although I will use this opportunity to say goodbye. You've seen the shoot man. You've seen the scientist. You've seen the box pusher. Uh, you have seen everything that I have seen in this game. Jelly killer. Immortal Game Studio. I have really been charmed by this game. I have enjoyed it. So far, it has been uh, quite, quite the fun time. I would recommend that you take a look. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.